Esther Diana. All right now, the draft privatization bill 2023 has outlined a framework that the Kenya Kwanzaa government will follow to turn around state owned enterprises. I'm now joined by Noah Kipkemboy from Nairobi CBD. Good afternoon, Noah. What is written in the fine print in this bill that we need to be aware of? What are some of the things that we need to look at? Well, indeed, Calvin things are always in the fine print and for a document such as the draft uh, privatization bill 2023 it is actually important for us to be able to sort of have a uh, proper engagement and look what exactly is going on other than uh, the you know straightforward things of uh, the formation of an authority that will be taking over from the commission and having, uh, you know, the overseeing power, having a board around that. What exactly is going on with this issue of privatization and what does it mean for the people of Kenya? And to help me understand this particular issue, I'm joined by economist Dr. David Kabata. Dr. Kabata, we're just chatting here. The issue about privatization bill, quite an interesting bill right there, the draft. Uh, but I want to hit the nail on the head. What doesn't add up in this particular bill? Thank you very much, Noah. I think one of the things that does not add up is the issue of removing the National Assembly from the, act, the development of the bill, basically because the government works under what we call checks and balances. So when you have the executive, if you look at that uh, privatization authority, it will be driven by the executive alone. So when you have the executive alone driving the the the, the privatization, uh, the, the the issue of the privatization, then it means that there is no checks and balances. And one of the things that they have talked actually there in the in the privatization bill is that there should be transparency and accountability. So why are they reducing the accountability bit by removing the parliament? The parliament, are the, 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 the National Assembly is the representative of the people. And therefore, they should actually play a major role when it comes to the privatization of the government, of the public resources. Uh, that's important because I'm looking at the structure of um, the authority. And uh, the authority, of course, shall be overseen by the board. Uh, but also, uh, in terms of giving the go-ahead, uh, they, they have to have, uh, there's a technical advisory committee uh, that, that should look at this privatization proposition. Yeah? And this particular committee has a representation from Treasury. I know you've mentioned that. Uh, there's also the Attorney General, uh, the, the authority itself, and uh, the company representative that's being aimed at to be privatized. Looking at the pieces and the past that you've had when it comes to privatization, is there sort of an interpretation that legislation has been an impediment to achieving quicker results? I don't think so, because Kibaki was able to privatize as many institutions as possible. He, we were, uh, during the Kibaki regime, we pre uh, they, they privatized Safaricom, Kenjen, Mumias, although it is not doing well. And therefore, I don't think the, 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 the registration has any problem, actually. And also, the Kenya Kwanza government has majority in parliament. So if they want to actually pass whatever, pass whatever they want to pass, they'll be able to do it. So the question is, why should the executive control the privatization of some of these public resources. Remember, I'm calling them public resources. And being public resources, then it means that, that the representative of the people must, must also play a critical role when it comes to their, their, their decision about their privatization. So I know there is public participation, and I think Kenyans should just tell the government the truth, that we need the MPs there, we, ha we need the National Assembly there so that we can have checks and balances. And as we finish up, what's the potential if, if the bill sails through and now we have legislation out of the question? It raises the question, what does that portend? Is there grounds for abuse or the framework within the bill is, 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 is well proof? Uh, to withstand all these potential forces. You see, the reason as to why we have the checks and balances is because of the issue of abuse. 
And if you look at that, the, the board, it, all those people are appointees of the president or the, yeah, the president. And therefore, it means that whatever the, 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 the executive want is what is going to happen. And let me say, Noah, I even wonder why we keep putting a lot of emphasis on privatization. Because we have privatized some of these institutions like Mumias, but they are still down. Why? Because the problem is not just about privatization. It is about government safety nets. The government, these people know that the government is going to come and bail them out. And therefore, the management, the issue of the corporate management is very poor. And therefore, as we also privatize them or think about privatizing them, we need to ask ourselves, what about the corporate management of some of these institutions? Because we can't do it and still have problems with, uh, with these institutions like we have seen in Mumias, we have seen in Uchumi, and all these other government institutions that were privatized, but they are not doing well. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Tari. Uh, Dr. David Kabata there saying that it's not just about privatization, but look at the whole picture of management especially. When we see some of these state-owned enterprises being run down, the core or the root of the problem has been management. But he says also that the issue of sort of secluding the people's representatives, that's the uh, parliament, national assembly, all this, it's quite a challenge. And uh, having executive at full and total control, it's something that should be of concern to us. Back to you, Calvin. All right, now, thank you 